Hey guys, and welcome to another walk-in Wednesday. Now this one is gonna be a quickie because I have one gun I wanna show you. Just came in from a friend of mine, Peter, in California. Now, I've mentioned Peter before. Everything he sends me is super rare and much appreciated. Uh, this one, according to him and according to me, is there's only one known in the whole world. But the power of YouTube is if any of you know of another boxed, nine millimeter PPK, uh, please let us know because as, as of this moment, we believe this is the only one pre-1945. Let me clarify, most of the post-war guns and on, hate to give it away, on the slide it'll say OM, U-L-M, that is post-war. That factory did not open up until the 50s. Everything that's pre-45 is going to be marked Zellamelis in Turrigan. So you will, you know, look at the slide right away before you tell me you have one. And secondly, you can tell the box. It has what we call an alligator box. Looks like this. Looks like alligator skin or snake skin, um, as opposed to this box, which is pre-1945. So just to clarify, here is the production numbers for pre, it's technically pre-April of 45. After April of 45, the factory was eventually destroyed by the Russians and it was in the Russian sector, so they could never do business in that sector again. Um, the post-war guns were done at the Ulm factory, ULM, which was in the West German side, and that wasn't even built till the 50s, uh, late 50s and into the 60s. So going back to the World War II or pre-war production, you see the 25 caliber was of course the rarest, uh, very hard to find. I've, I've sold a few. The 9mm is second with only about uh, 5,000 made and that's 2% uh, of the guns. And then of course you see the 20, 22 caliber and the vast majority are in 7.65. Now, in the Ulm factory, again post-war, the, the least made gun was 7.65. So it's the exact opposite. The, the more common guns are 9mm and 22 caliber. So if you look at your gun and say, I have a rare 9mm, if it's from the Ohm factory post-war, then that is one of the common, uh, common calibers. I'm not sure they made a 25 caliber post-war. Maybe some, one of you could help me out there. I don't really study those. Um, but I do know that uh, uh, the 9 millimeter was common, the 22 ca caliber is common, and the, the least common caliber is 7.65. Now I've shown you other box guns that were in 22 caliber. Um, most of them were 7.65, um, but I've never shown you one, and you can see right here on the box that it says 9 millimeter Kurtz or short. So it's not 9mm Luger, it's a shorter round, also known as uh, a 380 ACP here in the United States. Um, so let's open this up, and uh, this, oh, by the way, this is with MIT signal indicator pin, and that is what you find right back here. If you pull the hammer back, you will see the indicator pin right there. Uh, when the gun is loaded, that pin sticks out, and that was an option you could get it MIT, or without, mit or mit uns. Um, that's not right, please forgive me. I know my German is not right, but I know it's with or without. The first thing that we notice when we open this up is the manual, looks all correct, but it's unusual in that it's written in Spanish. And that's because this gun was um, bought by and sent to um, the government, uh, a government authority in Santiago, Chile, or Chile. Uh, if you look at the serial number, it's in the uh, 860,000 range, which I believe dates it to 1936. So the gun is made in 1936. It went to uh, San Diego, Chile, and you can see the high polished finish. Let's take a look at the gun. Beautiful, uh, I would say like brand new, not, no wear on this at all. If you're seeing any light reflections, it's not wear, it's definitely light reflections. Um, the, the grip has no cracks in it at all. We can see that it is crown end proofed and the eagle end, it was switched over from crown end to eagle end at the end of 39 into 1940. Again, this is made in 1936. The nine millimeter marking obviously is on the slide legend, but you can also tell right away when you can see that it is bottom released. Uh, most of them are, um, most of them are push button released. 
But what they found in the nine millimeter is drilling the hole for that button in the middle of the frame. It weakened the frame to the point that the nine millimeter was such a, a, such a powerful round that they did have problems with cracking of the frame. So they changed it to be the bottom release. That way it left the frame intact in terms of uh, less stress. Push the button back and you can see the magazine, which is also like new. You look at the follower, it looks like it he uh, never held a round. On the tube, you can see the Walther banner and then nine millimeter. When we look inside the box, we see the spare mag and the spare mag is in similar condition. So these two magazines uh, come in the box, uh, particularly for this gun. Also inside uh, is the regular cleaning rod and the cellophane that came with it. Again, probably never fired, probably never cleaned. It also has this, which I'm not sure is original to the gun. I'm wondering if it's in nine millimeter. Yeah, it's, this brush is in nine millimeter. It could have come with it or it could have been added later. I generally see these with my box guns and this looks brand new. Uh, this looks like it's been used or something was laid on top of it because it's flattened there. Uh, this rag, which we often see with the original guns. Uh, notice the pink interior. We've talked about that before. And then finally, the cleaning tin, which has the uh, Walther factory on it. 1936, it would have the early tin. When you open it up, you see the original oil bottle and the little cellophane marked Walther. Um, also in the box was this handwritten letter and it is written by a Sidney Stein who's in California. Mr. Stein documents that this gun was given to him in 1938. So it was made in 36, shipped to Santiago, Chile, and then Arturo Rios brought it to the United States. Now, Arturo was the Chilean ambassador uh, to the U.S. Embassy in Los Angeles. So he brought this into the United States, probably in a diplomatic bag. Well, in fact, at that point, they were not import marking guns. Um, he probably brought it in an, a diplomatic bag as part of the, um, the embassies. You know, they would have a firearm. Otherwise, I don't know why he would bring a gun into the United States. Clearly, it stayed in the box, was never, it, uh, never fired, and probably never taken out, sat in a drawer. But in 1938, he gave it to Sidney Stein in California as a gift of friendship. And it says here that he was my friend um, and that he gave it to me as a gift of our friendship. So Sidney Stein then uh, gave it to uh, uh, somebody named Mr. Smith and, Ms. and my friend Peter bought it from Mr. Smith. So there's a chain of ownership that goes to my friend Peter and then comes here. So we know that um, this is very rare because it's written in Spanish. We know that this came to the United States in 1938 and uh, now is part of my collection, but it is probably the only one in the world, nine millimeter boxed PPK. Oh, I almost forgot one thing. <laughs> no wonder I had it hidden under here. Uh, this came with it. Uh, this is also very rare and you can see it says, uh, for uh, PPK 9mm. This is a conversion kit, uh, came with the gun, uh, so came with the ambassador. If we open up uh, this box, you can see right away and you say, well, how do you know it came together? This is from the Walder factory. It's written in Spanish and it says right here on the uh, lid of the box, San Diego, Chile. So it had to have all come together. Very rare find. Uh, inside you will see the barrel which takes the nine millimeter and turns it into a 22 caliber. So the insert barrel fits into the nine millimeter and then these, these uh, cartridges are nine millimeter and will fit into the magazine. But on the end there's a little cap and it's a 22 caliber pellet. Um, I've never tried these out, maybe some of you have, but you need to buy the pellets and you can fire these. I've actually talked to people who said that they fire them in their own home, they go down the basement set up a, uh, a phone book. You remember what a phone book is, I hope. Uh, ancient uh, memorabilia. You put a phone book at the other end and you can shoot, you can plink little 22 calibers. So it, it's, it's good for target practice without using the nine millimeter round. But again, this barrel is the insert and this would be the cleaning rod um, for, the, for the 22 caliber insert. So overall, this is a really rare find, brand new condition. 
Really glad that this came my way. Thank you, Peter, uh, for sending this along. I, now I know why it was so hard for him to let go of this. He actually told me about this gun for many years. I, I would say for the past eight years, he's been talking about this gun, but didn't have the ability to take pictures of it. He kept telling me um, it's like brand new. And he said, when you see it, you're going to be shocked. So the day it came in, it was like Christmas morning. I opened up the box and I found this and I just have to put it away in the safe. Um, but before I do, I wanted to share it to, with all of you. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel because I want to show you more really rare guns just like this.